How can we embrace AI technology rather than just fearing AI technology? You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. You have a great website, right? Well, make sure you host it at some place that doesn't suck. Hey, it's Brad Newman, fellow VO pro for 28 years and owner of UpperLevelHosting.com. People ask why us, and that's simple. We make it easy, respect your time, save you money, and just make all the magic happen. You don't need to know all the tech stuff when it comes to hosting your website. We got you. Ask around tens of thousands of client interactions later and six years of amazing customer service and not a single negative complaint ever. UpperLevelHosting.com The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original everyday VOpreneur. Hello and welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur, ready to drop some more actionable, practical advice on you that you can use to grow your voiceover business. And if you are enjoying the information that gets shared in the podcast, would you take a minute to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening? Let people know that there's valuable content here that it can help them to grow their voiceover business as well. And thank you so much for taking a minute to do that. So I got to be honest with you, I've been sitting on this episode for a while now. Uh, The opportunity to do it was presented to me and I was nervous. I was nervous about doing an episode about AI because I know what a sensitive subject it can be within the voiceover community. But I also know that some of the AI technology that is out there can actually be really helpful to any VOpreneur who's looking to level up their business. I have been embracing ChatGPT in a number of different ways in my business for a while now, and it has been helpful to me. And so I decided, you know what? I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to do the interview. I'm going to put the information out there. And the people that want to use the technology and embrace the technology and benefit from the technology are the ones that are going to enjoy this episode and get the most out of it. And hopefully you're one of those people. So if you've ever thought about how can I use ChatGPT To grow my voiceover business, you're about to find out. In the brave new world of AI, which, by the way, has actually been integrated into our lives for many years at this point, but a lot of us just didn't realize it until ChatGPT became headline news, a voice actor is presented with an entirely new set of tools to deploy for their business. From helping spark ideas to writing entire pieces of marketing content, AI could become a a virtual assistant in a way. But before it replaces us all and renders us extinct, of course, my guest today has been embracing the use of AI tools in both his role as a digital marketer and a voice actor, and he's here to help guide us and get us thinking about ways we might be able to take advantage of AI. Welcome to the show, Mike Thomas. Hey, Mark. Thanks for having me. So first and foremost, let's let this is the most pressing question. Do you have an approximate date, time, and location for when the robots are going to replace us all? It is August 16th, 2037. As I was writing this question, this may fall short for some people, but I could not help but think of Dr. Peter Venkman in Ghostbusters Part (laughs) 2 when he's sitting there with the with the psychics asking, you know, if you can predict the exact day when the world is going to end. And because I'm such a Ghostbusters fanboy, I was having that that total moment there. I love the fact that you actually gave me a date. (laughs) Well, I mean, that's just what ChatGPT told me. Okay. So so now we're going to hold you to it and, and we'll see how it all plays out. But, <laughs> you know, we were talking a little bit before we started the interview. I was a little bit nervous about doing this because I know that AI is a, a very sensitive subject for a lot of voice actors. I'm not so extreme that I think that I'm going to be completely replaced in the next year or two. I'm also not so naive to think that, you know, it's never going to have an impact on my business. So I guess I probably sit somewhere in the middle. Um, but that's one aspect of AI, which, of course, is, you know, voice modeling and all of that sort of stuff. There are so many other AI tools that are out there and that are available to us that we can use for our business. And that's what I'm looking forward to talking to you about today. So let's start with ChatGPT. GPT. Because I'm really concerned that it's just, it's not getting enough press. And we, we probably <laughs> need to shine a little bit more light on it, you know? But 
I would love to hear some of the ways that you're using ChatGPT in your digital marketing job. Oh yeah, so we use we embrace ChatGPT uh, right around the or beginning part of the year, uh, sometime either end of last year, early this year, right after the news story started to really hit. We got in there and we started playing around with it, and we realized that this was far and away the best AI writing tool that we had tested on the market. Cause we've tested a few others cause in our digital marketing rule, you know, we're doing a lot of content for our clients and there's a lot of words that need to be written. And we were trying to find ways to make that as easy and efficient as possible. So we started playing around with ChatGPT pretty early on and we realized this thing is really good, really, really good. Can I tell it, write a blog post about this topic and get a blog post that we would pass and put on our client's website? No, not even close. But it was instantly noticeably better than all of the other ones that we had tested. And so we played around with it and we did some testing and we, we realized this was an idea generator more than anything else. Yeah. And it, it's a tool that can be used by almost anybody. And I think this is a tool that anybody out there can benefit from. Whether you get more benefit from it than somebody else kind of depends on your personal skill set. If you're a really good writer, you are not going to be using this to write content. Right. You might have it put together an outline for you. You might come up with ideas and maybe ways to punch up a title or a headline or something like that, but you're not going to use it to write. But if you get writer's block, or if you're not a good writer, or if you just I need to add 600 words to this blog post and I don't know how this thing will save the day for you. Okay. Now I'm curious, you know, we're talking specifically about chat GPT. I signed up for Bing. I only got accepted into the Bing trial like two days ago. So I haven't really had a chance to play with it yet. I'm still on a wait list for what is it? Bard Google's is, is Bard. I think. Oh, yeah. Are there, is it chat GPT primarily that you've been using or, or are there some of these other chat bots that are out there that you've played around with? I have not gotten into the Bing one. I got into the Google trial while I was at VO Atlanta, actually. Okay. So I ran up to my hotel room and I tested it out and after five minutes turned it off and walked away. It was not ready for prime time. Oh, see, don't tell me that. I'm a Google shareholder who's taking a crap <laughs> kicking in the stock market right now. So I, I don't want to hear the bad news about the Google one while I'm waiting for it to come online. So, okay, let's talk about then. You, you talk about how you use it in your digital marketing. Let's transition that over then into voiceover. Yeah. Are there areas where voice actors could be using chat GPT to assist with content? There are so many different ways that voice actors can use this. So I just... I had to rewrite my entire website recently. Uh, ironically enough, I was taking your playbook last year. This was a horrifying story, but it, I also find it hilarious. I took your playbook last year. I started direct marketing and I sent out my first wave of emails. And that week, my website broke. So I, working for a digital marketing company, thought, I can build a website. I do this all the time. <laughs> but I don't. I'm on the content side, not the yep. dev side. So. I tried to do it alone and of course it broke at the worst possible time. Uh, so now I went to my bosses who happened to be friends I've had since the seventh grade and they were like, why didn't you come to us first? You know, we would have built you a website. <laughs> so I'm in the process of getting a new website that will not break. Uh, and I needed to write content for everything. And I just went through and we, we use GBT four now, which is the newest model. And I use that to basically write all of the content on the website. I didn't go in and say, I need text for my homepage or for my commercial narration or commercial voiceover narration voiceover page. It's a little bit more involved than that, but sure. I used it to come up with almost every piece of content that's on my personal website. Now, I say assist with content because from my experience with ChatGPT, I don't think at this point, and I've probably been using it for... I think maybe two months since I since I started using, probably end of February, early part of March. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's ever given me anything that I can use straight up. But you know, you mentioned sparking ideas. That is 100% what it has done for me. I have looked at things that it has spit out, and I've been able to take that and then use that as a launching platform to come up with 
a LinkedIn post, a, a, a video idea, you know, something for my podcast or whatever. So you're not really generating anything then that's copy and paste. Is, is it more of a, a launching pad for you two to get ideas going? Very much so. So okay. it's all about the prompt. And remember, you can have it refine its answer. So you can give it a prompt and I might say, I, I've got some of the prompts I have up here. So I'm, I'll say this is for my audiobook narration page. My prompt was 10 paragraphs long. Wow. Okay. It, I now that's unusual, but I said, we're going to be working together to write a blog for my website, Mike Thomas voiceovers. The blog post is titled how to become an audiobook narrator. Use my text below to create a blog post. And then I just went stream of consciousness about what I wanted to say in the blog, what I wanted to put in there and the different pieces of information that I wanted it to include. And it took that spit it out into a blog with different sections and headlines and everything that you would expect to see in a blog, but it still wasn't good enough. It wasn't long enough. It didn't have enough keywords. I wanted it to add stats from this other blog or from this other piece I, that I had found. So I went back in and I said, all right, expand on the introduction. I want you to start with a story about someone who loves to read and has always dreamed about getting into audiobooks. And I, I went really deep on these prompts until I finally got something that I then did a full edit on adding my own voice to it. So it is not a type, get something out, copy paste onto your website. You are going to have to constantly be tweaking and working the content to get it to a point where it's going to be good for you. Can you clarify when we say prompt, I'm, you know, there's probably some people who have not used chat GPT at this point, or maybe aren't totally familiar with it. So can you just clarify what you mean when you're saying the prompts that I'm giving it? So, yeah. So when you log into this chat GPT, it looks like a text message chain. It even, it, it has the message bar that you type everything in. It says, send a message. And a prompt can be as simple as write a haiku about Star Wars. And it'll do that. That was the first thing I did in ChatGPT. I feel um, like writing poetry or writing songs about was like, that was like all the rage in the very beginning. Apparently we've all got like this inner musician or, or poet inside <laughs> of us waiting to get out. That's like what everybody was doing. <laughs> yeah. It's also because it's the most impressive, I think too, that it could actually do it. But yeah, so that's your prompt. So your prompt can be, take this blog post and give me ideas for five different social posts or write five different social posts based on this blog, or I'm writing a blog about corporate narration. Can you outline the blog for me? And that's your prompt. It'll spit something out for you. And then you can continue to message it to refine. You can say yeah. this part's good, but this part needs to change or add this, remove remove this part here, you can continue to work with it. It's not a one and done type situation. I think that was the interesting and also the creepy part of it for me was that as you get into it, it's like my wife was sitting beside me the one day while I was typing it away and, and getting it to do things. And uh, she's watching over my shoulder as I'm typing it. She's like, it's like you're having a conversation with it. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is like I'm having a conversation with because, I, I, you know, I type like, OK, that was really great. But can we change this and can you try it this way and do it that way or whatever? Right. And then it spits out the next one. And so you're constantly going through this refining process. But but there does come a point where you almost do feel like you're having a conversation with, you know, somebody sitting on the other side of this thing, which, hey, for all we know, maybe that's exactly what's going on. And the whole thing's a fraud. But but that's exactly how it feels. All right. That's what I thought anyway. Well, if there is somebody on the other side, they are the fastest typer alive. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, the The results do come up very quickly. You had me curious. I had to go back through and look. So this is how lame I am. Uh, the first prompt that I ever did with it was to give me ideas for my podcast. Can you give me some marketing I or ideas for a voiceover marketing podcast? Uh, the second thing I asked it about was giving me ideas for some tweets. Uh, the third thing I asked it about was giving me some ideas. For, so LinkedIn. So it's like, of course, everything I do in it is like, you know, can you give me ideas for it? Can you give me ideas for it? I've never asked it to to write or song or, or poetry or anything like that. But it should be like, what should the Red Sox do to fix their season? Uh, well, they probably should have done something in the off season and then they should fire Hein Bloom. That's <laughs> I don't need chat GPT for that. <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of different ways that technology like ChatGPT can help us in our voiceover business. They can become just another tool in the toolbox. I don't think that a service like ChatGPT is gonna replace any of our tasks 
yet, but certainly it can be an assistant. So what does that mean? It means we've still got to write the social media content. We've still got to write the blogs. We've still got to write the copy that's going into our genre pages. And it also means that we've still got to write the emails. Now, do you need help writing your introductory email? If you struggle with what to write in that email, I want to help you create a template that works. A template that you can use over and over and over again. A template that you can feel confident with. I'm going to be teaching a live introductory email workshop May 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And in this workshop, which is limited to 10 attendees, I'm going to teach you what goes into a great introductory email, and I'm going to give you real-time personalized feedback on your email to help you to make it even better. To find out more about this workshop and to get signed up, visit markscottcoaching.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage at markscottcoaching.com. Remember, it is limited to 10 people, and these sessions always sell out. So again, the details are available at markscottcoaching.com. Look for the live email workshop link right on the homepage. Now back to our show. In the couple of months that I've been playing with it, I will say there are days when I think, oh my gosh, this thing is brilliant. Where have you been all my life? And by the way, you're probably going to replace me one day. And then there are other days when I quite literally want to punt my computer across the room like a football and, and question how man could have created something so utterly useless. But you know, it really does come down. I've realized, you know, like any tool, success or failure comes down to how you use it. And, and it really does come down to the prompts. So you've explained what the prompts are. Can you give us any insights into how we can make our prompts a little bit better? So being detailed, I think, is very important. If you give it a very basic prompt with, with no real direction, you're going to get a very basic response. If you give it a very detailed description, it's going to be much, it's going to give you a much better result. So it's, it's like our diet, right? Garbage in, garbage out. Yes. Okay. That's, that's kind of the same situation. Now there's a couple of different tricks too, when it comes to the prompt. So if you've logged in, they have, they save your different chats. Yep. They call it, they call it chat. So it will remember everything that's within the existing chat. So if you want to go back to something like if I wanted to go back and tweak, uh, I did a one on the blog on the how to become an audiobook narrator. So if I want to make some changes to that, I don't have to start a brand new chat, I can go back to that one and keep typing. And it'll remember all of the previous information that was in there. If I want to write another blog or change a topic entirely or do something else, I can create a new chat. So that's one way to kind of keep your prompts from blending. It becomes almost like a, a thread or a, a stream of consciousness, right? Like when I ask exactly. it, can you give me 10 ideas for tweets? I can come back next week and say, okay, these were great. Can you give me 10 more? Yes. So that it doesn't just, you know, if I started every new chat over again, it'd probably spit out a lot of the same stuff over and over again, right? Oh, even within the same thread. That was yeah. the one thing with the original GBT version. You would ask it to write a blog and every blog would just be repetitive in each paragraph would say the same thing and and you had to go back in and really edit those things with a heavy hand the gbt4 which is the newest version it doesn't do that nearly as much it still has it but not nearly as bad i think that's something that i've noticed as well i, I actually made a post about this probably a month or two ago uh in one of the facebook groups that i run where i talked about how oh i can tell I could tell who's using GPT to write their marketing emails because I went through this stretch where like for two weeks, I was getting inundated with all these marketing emails from all kinds of different people selling all kinds of different stuff. But the email was like literally the exact same email. They just tweaked out, you know, one service for another service or whatever. And I'm like, oh, these are, you know, probably just templates that have been created by a, a chat bot or something like that. And so, I mean, there, it's it's a really handy tool, but we're not at that take over my business for me, like take over my marketing for me, take over my emails for me, take over my social media for me, take over my blog writing for me or whatever. There's, there's still quite a ways to go, I think. Yeah. But what it can do is save you a lot of time. So if you are a mediocre writer, like I am, who, if I get in the zone on a particular topic, I can knock something out fairly quickly. Sure. Or I can get hung up on the details and it takes me a couple hours to get some mediocre text on the page. 
this can smooth that out. And what was taking me three hours to do now takes me an hour and a half. Yeah. Yep. The social posts, I'm terrible at social media. I do it for a living and I'm still terrible at it. <laughs> and uh, I can go to this and say, all right, uh, give me five ideas based on this blog or yeah. give me something to say based on this one thing and it'll give me ideas. And so the amount of time I'm spending on social media goes way down because I'm not sitting here staring at a blank keyboard with a blinking light showing me all the text I should be writing. Yeah. Same thing with emails. I really struggle with sending those marketing emails. I'm sure a lot of people out there do. And while I don't want to use this to necessarily write the whole thing for me and just copy paste that into everyone, I can feel better sometimes putting stream of consciousness thoughts into what I want to say into this and having it formatted in a way that sounds human-like, which is ironic because it's coming from a machine. I think this is a really important distinction for people to understand, though, is that you're not – the goal should not be to generate copy and paste content as much as, as it is to try to open up your mind to some new ideas or some new ways of coming at things or you know, helping you to, to get past that initial – brick wall that we all stand in front of sometimes when we're trying to write a page for our website, write a post for LinkedIn, write a, a, a marketing email or something like that. And I think that's, that's definitely where I've found it the most helpful. And I, I create a lot of content for social media and it's hard some days, especially trying to come up with something new, right? What have I not already mm -hmm. talked about or whatever? And so I love the fact that I can get it to help me to do some of those types of things in particular. I think probably the, the best thing that I did, the most validating thing that I've done with it so far, which is going to sound so lame, but I actually asked it to go to my website and read my website. Um, the, I think the prompt that I put was like, can you take a look at my homepage at markscottcoaching.com and let me know if there are any improvements that I can make? And it wrote back and it was like, oh, your design is great. Your navigation is great. Your Headline and tagline are great. Your call to action is great. Your about section is great. I think the only thing it said was get some testimonials. And I was like, oh, well, it makes me feel a little bit better about the fact that, you know, apparently I've done a good job on my website or whatever. But it's I guess it's going to be really interesting to think about all of the different ways that we can ultimately use this and, and, and how, it you know, rather than being afraid of this technology, if it's going to replace us one day anyway, why not embrace it in the meantime and get the most out of it as we can while there's still an opportunity to do it? I guess that's kind of how I think about it. I, yeah. And to go back to the conversation point, when I was first starting to redo the text of my website, I said, I started typing the first paragraph and I used first person. And then I started typing the second paragraph and I was using third person because I'm a mediocre writer. And I went to ChatGPT and I said, should I do first person or third person on my website? And it said, well, if you do third person, it comes across as more professional, but a little bit more distant from your audience. So if you want to build a connection and build a relationship, go with first person. It felt like I was slacking coworkers. It, that's what it felt like. It was, and I had a very weird moment myself with that part. <laughs> but yes, I used to think there's no way AI is going to take our jobs, especially in the creative field. And of course, those were the first ones to go. Yeah. Uh, then I thought, all right, well, AI is definitely going to take everybody's job but not in my lifetime. Yeah. And then it was, well, all right, it'll be in my lifetime, but it'll be a while. Like it'll be the end of my Maybe lifetime. Maybe I'll save enough for retirement first. <laughs> and now I'm like, it's 2037. That's, that's, but, and if I can at least, you know, hitch my, what's the, what's that saying? Hitch my, I, I always start saying, and I can never finish them. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes. Getting, if I can grab onto the AI now, I'll be better off than yep. if I ignore it entirely. Cause this I feel is going to be the most disruptive technology of our lifetimes. And yeah. we live through the rise of the internet. Yeah. And, and I mean, I I'm, I'm totally in the same boat. I'm like, look, let me embrace this. Let me use this. Let me take it as a tool that can help me to grow my business and get me to a new level. And then if in five years it replaces me or 10 years it replaces me or 20 years it replaces me, at least I've milked every possible dime and opportunity out of my business that I could using some of these things that were readily available for me to, to help me do it. Uh, you know, maybe that's, I don't know if that's a good way or a bad way to think about it, but that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. And the reality is like, whether I want to admit it or not, it, it's helping me and it's making me, it's making me more efficient. Like where, you, you know, you talked about where something that might've took three hours now, it takes me an hour and a half. It's like, 
I could spend an entire Sunday night sitting on the couch trying to come up with ideas for, you know, five tweets, five Facebook posts, and five LinkedIn posts. And, and now I might be able to do that in half an hour with a couple of good prompts. I still have to write all the content, mm-hmm. but I'm not spending so much time trying to come up with the ideas. We had to plan a video shoot recently for a client. Now, I already knew the topics that we were going to do, but I was able to go into ChatGPT and say, here's the video, here's the focus keyword we want to we want to hit with the with the video and it spit out some good outlines yeah i still had to edit them but i was able to take a task that would have taken me a couple hours and do it in 40 minutes we can do that with podcast description text that can take forever to write but if you have a transcript of the podcast you can copy that transcript into chat gbt and say write a podcast description based on this transcript That was an interesting one for me. So I attempted to do that. And I'm curious because, you know, you talked a little bit about GPT-4 and I want to get into that with whatever it is, GPT-3, I guess, that that most of us are on. If you're just using the free version, I put in a link to my podcast. It said, you know, if you want me to do a podcast transcription, link me to the audio file. And so I linked to the audio file and it spit out five different transcriptions for five different podcasts that weren't even my podcast. They weren't even... (laughs) the right episode or whatever. I was like, okay, so, you know, I don't have to worry about that then. Does it work in GPT-4? Well, so there's an interesting thing. So there's a difference here. ChatGPT can be confidently wrong about things. Yeah. So you have to be careful about that. And you can call it on it and it'll just be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're right, that was wrong. And if you follow up like, well, if it's wrong, why'd you say it? And you just, it kind of just gets into the circle. So <laughs> you're trying to I'm, make it feel bad about itself. <laughs> I'm surprised that it told you, send me a link to the audio file. Cause as far as I know that it doesn't work. I tried to link it to a Google doc recently just to test it. And it was like, I, I think I said, write a, write a social media post based on this Google doc. And I linked to the Google doc and it wrote a social post that had nothing to do with the blog. And then when I pushed on it, it said, actually, I, I can't read a Google Doc. Uh-huh. So you got to be a little careful with that. But I use another AI system uh, called Otter AI, which does auto transcriptions. And there's a bunch of different ones out there. But we can upload an audio or video file to that. It spits out the transcript automatically. We take that text, put it back into ChatGBT, and then it does the description text for us that way. Okay. So there are ways you just got to know the right tools or whatever to do it. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into, you talked about you, you had it writing blog posts for your, the audiobook section of your website. So I think one area where a voice actor could potentially benefit from something like this is maybe say they want to create some copy for a, a genre page. So they've mm-hmm. got a commercial page, a, an audiobook page, a corporate narration page or whatever. So we want to create some content for that page so that we can maybe get a little bit of SEO out of that page or whatever. What kind of a prompt would you give to chat GPT to get it to write some copy that would help with SEO? What, what would you say to it? So I would start by giving it just a blanket. This is what we're doing. We are making a commercial voiceover or uh, an automotive voiceover page for our website and link to your website. And then I would follow it up with, let's start with an engaging headline and opening section and take it section by section. ChatGPT does a lot better in smaller doses. If you try to have it do the entire thing at once, it's gonna be rough. If you go section by section, you're gonna get better results, but it's gonna be repetitive. So you have to keep that in mind. And just like with everything else, these are just, this is to get you like a baseline. So you're starting with something, you're starting at third base as opposed to starting from behind the plate. Yep. Okay. And, and that's, that's good to know. And, uh, you know, so even if it spits out some stuff that's repetitive, that's where, you know, we've said all along, we're, we're not creating copy and paste content here, but we're creating bits and pieces of content or streams of consciousness, ideas, whatever that can help you to create the final content that you're you're choosing to use. But let's talk a little bit about the risk associated with using some of this AI generated content. I know one thing that I see coming up often is around copyright for, for AI generated mm-hmm. content, which is a concern. 
you mentioned that it can be what you said confidently wrong, I think is what what you said. Yep. Uh, so so talk about some of the risks that we should be aware of before we're like, I'm going to throw everything at chat GPT and make it do all of my business stuff. Yeah, there are some risks. Uh, number one, Google has claimed that they will punish AI written content in their SEO rankings, whether they're capable of doing that or not. I don't know. Uh, but that's my understanding that Google is claiming they don't want to have AI written content cluttering up their SEO results. So how do you avoid that if you're using an AI writer to help you come up with ideas and content? There are some so-called AI detector websites out there that allow you to copy and paste your text in, and they will tell you whether it was written by a human or written by AI. I'm not sold that these are great. I was going to say, how, how do you determine that? Like, really? I have to imagine that in their mind, they've reverse engineered these things. So they were like, well, it just, we think the AI would, would be most likely to say these words. Cause it's all just, it's the AI on these is just saying like, what's the next most likely word. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's how it's building everything. So I feel like that's how these AI detectors are working, but. I've put in text straight out of GBT with no edits and it's passed with flying colors. I have taken text that I wrote personally and put it in there and it was like written by a machine. So that's dangerous. I like that's a dangerous precedent, right? Because how if Google starts punishing you when they don't actually know or when you can't actually confirm who wrote it or how it was written, that's very interesting. Yeah. Now I have to imagine if Google does have uh, AI detection software, it's going to be a lot better than what I can find for free online. But there are, these are just some of the tools that are, are public. So I, that I always take my content and run it through an AI detector. Okay. And we also use a lot of freelancers. Uh, we'll go to hire freelancers to write content for us. I also run their stuff through an AI detector just to make sure. Then the next step I do is I run it through a plagiarism detector Smart. because I had times now, this was the older GBT model, but we had times where entire sections were lifted from other websites. Oh, wow. That's, I don't know necessarily about copyright, but from an SEO standpoint, that's not good. Yeah, it's really bad. Yep. So I always run things through a plagiarism detector. So every piece of content that I write or oversee through ChatGPT, once I edit it and do all my stuff with it, it then goes through an AI detector and then goes to a plagiarism detector. Do you have uh, detectors of choice that you use that you can mention and we can link them in the show notes? Uh, one is called AI Content Detector and it's CrossPlag, C-R-O-S-S-P-L-A-G. I like that one because there's no character limit. Okay. I can just copy and paste the whole thing. Okay. There's another one from writer.com. That's just writer.com slash AI content detector. Uh, but that's an older, they're a GBT three model and they limit you to a thousand. I think it's either a thousand words or a thousand characters, but either way it wasn't enough. Okay. We'll, we'll put some links in the show notes just in case somebody wants to check that, but that's a very valid point. Even particularly the, the plagiarism thing, right? And ripping off if it's ripping off content from from other websites because duplicate content does not do well or does not perform well for for Google for SEO purposes. So that's worth mm -hmm. worth knowing. Now, okay, let, let's get into GPT versus GPT four because you've talked about that a little bit. One is free, one is one is premium, and you've used both sides. So talk to us a little bit about GPT four, the differences, and is it worth it for the average user? Well, uh. I think it's going to depend on the user. So certainly it does not take much benefit to be worth the cost. It's $20 a month to get GBT4. If you're saving an hour of time or an hour and a half on one piece of content, that might be worth the 20 bucks right there. Very valid. So I think it's worth it. And the difference is huge. I can take content right out of GBT4 and look at it and go, that's pretty good. That's passable. That was not the case with the old GBT. The old GBT is really good still with the ideas. I don't think there's a noticeable difference between the ideas of 
the old GBT and the GBT4. So if you're just looking for how to outline your page and you'll fill in the blanks, if you're just looking for social media ideas, things like that, low lift things like the podcast description text or a YouTube video description text or headlines for your website or uh, I need to figure out how to say this thing in an email and you just stream of consciousness into there, into the GBT and it spits out something you can use. The base level's fine. I think if you really want to use it from a content standpoint, it is well worth the upgrade. Okay. Interesting. Good to know. And I mean, very valid point on if it saves you an hour, is an hour of your time worth $20? And we're talking about $20 a month. So, right, if it, if it saves you 10 hours over the course of the month on content creation and things like that, there's a there's definitely a valid use case to be made for it. So something to to think about. I I can see, I can see for me, for because of how much content I'm trying to create on a regular basis, I can see where there might be an advantage to something like that. But I still don't, I, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to see GPT-4 to know whether or not I trust it to, you know, create content that I can use versus just give me the ideas. You know, if you can give me the ideas, I can come up with it. But so what about, you know, we obviously this has been mostly dedicated to, to chat GPT. It's, it's the one that everybody's talking about it. There's a ton of hype over it right now. Are there other AI tools that you are using that might be worth looking at for us? I use an AI calendar. Okay. So I, I'm maybe I jumped into the deep end of the pool with this because a computer just tells me what to do every minute of my day from 7.30 in the morning until 5 <laughs> o'clock at night. But it's called Reclaim. Okay. And it can sync to your Google calendar and you can have multiple calendars in there. So I've got my... A personal calendar in there. I've got my voiceover calendar connected in there and I've got my work calendar in there. It can sync all of your meetings and put those on your calendar. I can load in tasks to it and it will say, uh, when I load the task in, I'll say, I think it's going to take me an hour and this needs to be due by Friday at five o'clock. And this might take 20 minutes, but it needs to be due Tuesday at three 30 before this meeting. Right. And it will, populate my calendar with those tasks when I can work on them. So no longer do I have to go to my task list and say, okay, I've got 30 minutes. What should I work on? Or, oh, what's the, what's, what's the next thing I need to do here? It just puts it right there on the calendar for you. That's crazy. You know, I'm noticing, and maybe you're noticing this too, like I use so I just moved over markscottcoaching.com to Kajabi, which is the the course platform that I'm using. And that's I went through that transition for voiceover marketing playbook for the new version here a couple of weeks ago. And there's AI functionality built into Kajabi now that they're starting to introduce where, you know, you can type in part of your website or, or uh, you know, part of the copy and you have to type in your text, but then you can hit a button and it'll look at it and tell you how to improve it. So there's, there's things like that. I know some voice actors that are using clothes for their CRM. And they talk about the fact that there's AI technology that's starting to get built into that. Anybody that's using Gmail that, you know, if you're typing an email and it comes up with the predictive text of, of you know, what, what it thinks you're going to say next or whatever, and it can complete sentences for you. That's a form of AI. Alexa, Siri, what is it? Google, OK, Google, all of these different things are all forms of AI. Like the, some of this stuff has been around for a long time, but maybe we just haven't haven't realized it. Are you seeing it? pop up in any other places? Like I think since GPT came out, it's popping into more places more quickly. Are, are there any other places you're seeing it? Yeah, no, I think you hit a lot of the big ones. I know I keep seeing comments and stories about it being able to integrate with the different platforms, but I haven't had experience with that stuff directly. It, it For us, it's just kind of ChatGPT is open in one of my windows and it's it's kind of just doing its own thing over there. But I know you can integrate it into other other elements. Plus, I'm sure I'm going to have an AI coffee maker here soon that's going to help <laughs> me have the perfect cup of coffee every morning. I mean, look, I'm, I've already, I'm all about the smart home, right? I mean, it can control my lights, my thermostat, my music, my TVs, all of that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I'm really, I'm, I'm you know, I'm literally setting myself up to be t completely taken over and replaced at some point, but I do love the the productivity and creativity functionality of some of these AIs. It's it's hard to ignore. It's hard to ignore. Yeah, I, I uh, 
I watched Wally recently with my daughter, and that went from being a cute movie that I remembered fondly to wow, what a dystopian nightmare of a future that they <laughs> predicted in a Walt Disney movie. Some... And, and not even just like what happens on Earth, but like the humans in outer space, they're all just, they're on these chairs and computers are telling them what to do and think and to just keep them constantly entertained 24 seven. And I don't know if it's just that I'm older or not, but now I'm like, that's a nightmare. And that's where we're headed. <laughs> it, it is one of the things that I think about where, the more that I rely on some of these tools to to help me with, you know, I even something as simple as idea generation. Am I am I doing myself a disservice because if I don't have to think about it, am I going to lose my own creativity? Right? Like it's yeah. it's I'm starting to have an existential crisis in my brain of of what this thing is doing for me while simultaneously embracing it to help me do some of the things that it's helping me to do. But okay, so look, we we talked about. You know, using it for idea generation for content, social media, you know, writing blog posts or outlines for blog posts and things like that. Using it for helping with content for, you know, if you wanted to write a, a genre specific page, you mentioned your your AI calendar. Are there any other use cases that that have been really helpful to you or really handy that you think, hey, you should maybe test drive this one or, you know, use it for something like this? Are you meal planning been... with, with it? I, I oh. see that's a very popular one. <laughs> No, the meal plan app I have is not uh, is not AI yet. It does have a nice little, like you put in your meals for the week and it spits out your shopping list, but it's not fully AI just yet. Um, Grammarly is a good one. That's kind of, I would, I would argue it's kind of like that because it looks at your text and it can give you suggestions on how to improve it. Uh, and and it, it also has a plagiarism checker built into that. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the AIs we'd been using were really bad up until ChatGPT. Look, and I'm, that was it was a scary revelation. I'm an I'm an Apple fanboy. I am not ashamed that I'm an Apple fanboy. I am not a Siri fanboy, and I've nope. always had frustrations with Siri. And the more that I see what GPT is capable of, the more frustrated I become with Siri. I'm like, how <laughs> are you so far behind on the learning curve on this one? But yeah, yeah. we have a portal in our kitchen. And, you know, you could, it has the Hey Portal, which is Facebook's AI thing that's always listening in. And then it also has Alexa. So I've got two mega corporations listening in to everything we do in the kitchen. And it's frustrating to figure out which one can do what. I, one of them can tell me the weather in one way that's useful, but it doesn't show me maybe the hour breakdown for the rest of the day. So then I have to ask the the second AI to show me the weather for the day. So they need to, you know, they need to catch up. Maybe this maybe this race that has been sparked now as a result of it will will cause some of this technology to improve. I mean, I have to think if I'm Apple and I'm watching what is going on from the sidelines right now, I'm sure somewhere in a deep, dark cave, you know, off the grid, Apple is developing all of this stuff and just hasn't come out with it yet because they don't want to have a, a moment like Google did when it introduced Bard, for example. But yeah. I think we're already seeing the technology grow at like an almost exponential level. Like even listening to people talk about the difference from GPT-3, which came out in what, December, November, December, something like that? Yeah, it was around that time. To, to GPT-4 and, and the, the massive leap forward that it took in that one iteration in the span of what, like four months or something? It's so it, it that part of it is a little scary and a little intimidating. I did see somewhere, well, I'll do the thing that I hate which is I thought I saw this thing online <laughs> of the open AI or somebody with open AI saying that we might be rapidly approaching the max of what these LLMs, the large language models are capable of, but there's the next level that is really sci-fi and that is something that they're actively working on. I'm just waiting for Elon to finish the robot that he keeps teasing so that it can come and do my dishes and vacuum my floors and wash my windows. When, when the, do we get that AI? <laughs> the high-speed tunnel that's yeah. going to connect LA to Vegas and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's all coming. Six months, two weeks. Makes me think of the Money Pit, the movie The Money Pit. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Everything's, <laughs> everything's coming in two weeks. Well, Mike, this has been a really great conversation and I think it's been very enlightening. I, you know... Voice actors come down, a lot of voice actors come down very negatively on the AI side of things because they're only looking at it from one position, which is how it's going to impact their jobs. And, and that's fair. The reality is there's 
not going to be too many industries ultimately that are left untouched by this. I mean, you know, once upon a time, everybody wanted to get into computers and technology and we all abandoned the trades. But, it, you know, at the end of the day, when when all this takes over, I don't see ChatGPT, you know, doing drywall or installing carpet or, you know, roofing your house or whatever. So maybe manual labor is the, the safe place to go. But but you it know, could program the robot that does the drywall. Could, yes, it could ultimately. But I mean, I, I guess we have that we have the choice, right? We can we can raise our pitchforks or stick our heads in the sand. We can protest the technology and fear the technology and, and worry about what it what it ultimately means for our business. Or, I mean, maybe maybe the other alternative is we embrace it and we use the tools that are available to us to try to provide even more value or a greater service to our clients for as long as we have the opportunity to provide that service. And, and you know, maybe I'm optimistic or maybe I'm naive. I still think we've got a while to go here. We've got, um, you know, 13 years three months and yeah seven days that's right based on the predictions so yeah I'll put a countdown on this uh, on this page when I put it up on my on my website so we can start the, <laughs> we'll, we'll start we'll get chat GPT to write an app for us for the doomsday countdown to to when you've predicted that this is all coming to an end <laughs> no that's that's too much like Skynet for me <laughs> now there's one more thing I wanted to get to and that is your book club, which I'm very intrigued by because I'm a very avid reader myself. So tell us a little bit more about what you got going on here. Yeah. So I I threw a comment out into the Vopreneur Facebook group a couple of weeks ago, and I asked if anybody was interested in joining a Vo book club where we could get together once a month, read a book uh, on our own about the business or about the voiceover industry in general, or maybe just the overall business self-help type book. And got a good response. So we're going to get started. We're planning to meet the first Tuesday of every month. And it's just a group of people getting together and trying to improve our business. I figured everybody out there is a lot smarter than I am. So I'm going to read the book. But if I want to actually understand it, I need to have other smarties telling me what, what I actually read. So that's the goal for the book club. And if anybody's interested, you can just email me, mike at mikethomasvo.com. The first book we're doing is Voiceover Achiever, because that was one that was on my list. And then, Mark, I think you spoke about it at on one of your Friday uh, videos. And I was like, well, I've heard about it twice in two days. I better put it on the list to start with. So we're going to start with that one. And then we're going to pick the next book at the meeting. And hopefully, uh, this could be a nice little monthly get together that we have where we can network and find out ways to grow our business. I actually am going to be interviewing Celia Siegel in a couple of weeks. And so I read Voice Over Achiever uh, probably about two weeks ago. I sat down and read it in a night. I just, nice. I was like, it, in a, it's so good. It's so, there's so much good information in there. Be prepared if you want to do a lot of homework. Uh, there's certainly a lot of homework opportunities, but a great book to start on. Definitely lots to learn in that. So that's going to, that's going to be a good choice. So, well, thank you for that, Mike. I'll put your, I'll make sure your email address goes into the show notes as well. So that if anybody wants to reach out and, and join. Uh, I mean, look, I, I tell people all the time, probably, if not the number one, easily one of the top three reasons why I've been able to achieve anything that I've achieved in my voiceover business at this point is because of the books that I read, because I'm not an educated guy. You know, I don't consider myself to be the smartest guy in the room. I just read a ton and learn from people who who have things to teach. Uh, you know, once you go through some of those types of books, then I suppose you can get into the nonfiction world ending, you know, predictions of, of what the what the robots and the AI are <laughs> going to do. What's what's the one that everybody talks about all the time? Snow, snowfall or what, what is it? I can't even remember now. It's some the, the one that like all the tech geniuses in Silicon Valley have read and they figure all of this is is based off of and it was written, I don't know, 20 years ago or something like that. And it basically has predicted all of this. So maybe that so you've. Can... You've read a lot more than I have. I haven't heard of that one yet. I was thinking of like Snowpiercer. I'm like, that doesn't seem like something Silicon Valley would be into. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I'm going to have to look it up now because it's driving. It's going to drive me nuts. But it was like one of these sci-fi books that basically started predicting all of this stuff. And it's like now it feels like it's playing out in real time. I'm like, oh, great. So we created our own self-fulfilling prophecy on how we're going to bring about the end of the world with technology. <laughs> oh, did you mean to say The Simpsons? Because they seem to predict everything now. That's true, too. There, there, There is a lot of there, – there's something – uh, psychic going on in, in the Simpsons too, for sure. <laughs> well, Mike, this has been great. Thank you so much for, for sharing uh, the information that you've shared and, and for helping us to figure out some of this stuff. And, and maybe there's some ways that we can embrace this technology to, to do even more and do even better in our business. So I'm grateful to you for sharing that. Thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. And I think we, it is something we can all use because none of us have enough content on our website.
If I can find a tool that can give me back time, that is a tool that has value to me because I've got a lot that I've got to do in the course of an average week. And that is what ChatGPT has done for me more than anything. It has given me back time. It's helped me find ways to take tasks that used to take several hours and reduce them down to just a couple hours here and there. And that is huge for me. That means I've got more time to work on other priorities in my business, or maybe it means that I've got more time off, more time with my family, more time to just relax. And I am all about that. So if you have thought at all about playing around with ChatGPT and trying to determine if there's any ways that it might be able to help you with your business, I hope that this interview has inspired you, and I hope that you are looking for ways now to embrace that technology. If you enjoyed this episode, would you do me a favor? Let me know that you're listening. Let me know that you're learning. Let me know how you're using ChatGPT if you are. You can tag me in your Instagram stories. I'm at Mark Scott. And tag Mike Thomas as well and let him know that you enjoy the episode. He's at Mike Thomas VO. And I'll put both of those in the show notes for you. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday VOpreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. And sing. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more Vopreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.